everybody, and welcome, welcome to, to the Macaw Podcast, Podcast Universe. Universe. And this is our scariest episode Spooky. yet. It, this one is going to be very, very scary because what is scarier to a Hollywood producer than a failed movie franchise that doesn't make it past the first movie? Yes. So, um, yes, that is our take of the day. Um, we are doing that. Um, and we're we're taking on 2015's Fant Four Stick Four, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four, a truly terrible, terrible movie. Um, we had a lot to choose from because we wanted to do this failed movie franchise thing, but I thought since we're in the middle of Marvel, still it would be funny to do this because it's. Yeah. This is this this would have come out um, I think after Ant Man and Avengers: Age of Ultron, so like. The Disney Marvel stuff is riding real high. Yeah. And then um, and then you have this movie that's really, really terrible. So um, this will be a little bit of a quicker episode. We we watched the movie, but like I was I had already seen it and we were just kind of like we're this one's going to be more more conversational because we just want to kind of slam the movie and then back to our regularly scheduled program with tomorrow being Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay, we still have our episode. Few notes. So I do have a couple still. So it came out August 7th, 2015. It was directed by Josh Trank. It had a budget of 120 to 155 million. Um, and producer Kinberg and Parker rewrote the ending. And then basically all you need to know is that before they even filmed the movie, they announced that they were making a sequel. Mm -hmm. And I remember like the month before it came out or maybe a couple of weeks, they were talking about the sequel. And I was like, man, you really, you, even if, even if you are planning a sequel, I think for like a new franchise, you should just not say anything. Just yeah. wait until it comes out and yeah. then say it. But I feel like that means that they're, they're uh, not very confident in the first one. They're like, don't worry, there's going to be more. Oh, see, you know, that's not what I get from it. What you I think get it's is, overconfidence. Yeah. Overconfidence that they're like, they're like. Oh, like check, this is going to be a slam dunk movie, and then next time around yeah. we're just going to be dunking again. And uh, so, but um, I believe it was um, right before the movie came out. Josh Trank, the director, wrote this on Twitter a year ago. I had a fantastic version of this, and it would have received great reviews. You'll probably never see it. That's reality, though. And he quickly deleted it, and he quickly lost his job. Um, going to be uh, one of the directors of one of the Star Wars movies. He was going to do um, one of the, the canceled... Um, like spinoff. Spinoff movies. But uh, so I think he partially lost it because of how bad this movie did and also how he, he just like bashed the producers. But I I, I think you'll agree with this. Um, but I, I feel for like... It to turn off. There, it's not... I didn't close it all the way. Um I, I think that there is not a version of this movie that's good because there's really nothing good in this movie. It's not like you go, oh, yeah, I see if, how, like, they doubled down on that and those scenes were cut. It would have been good. This is just, like, a boring, boring movie where they don't become the Fantastic Four until, like, the end of the movie. And it's also, like, a, a dark take on these characters that are classically, like, family-oriented. And it sucks. Yeah. What do you think about this movie? It's a sucker. really, really boring because it's not even a superhero movie. Not they really. Don't, they don't fight crime. Like they don't. You know. I mean, they do at the end, but I don't know. Well, and 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 we're again, listener. We're just gonna jump around because we're we just want this one to be a fun a fun little episode. But but Doctor Doom is classically like a big time Marvel villain, and in this movie they just reduce him to like. Do you play Doctor Doom in the other one? Uh, I don't remember his name. I'm going to look it up. But um, they just reduce him to kind of like a whiny person who just shows up at the very end of the movie and, and does ha actually have the one cool sequence in the movie where he's killing all those people. His design isn't even that cool. And then they just punch him into a sky beam and he dies. Yeah. It's horrible. They, they beat him so quickly. Yeah, and then and then my, my favorite worst part of this movie oh. is at the very end when they turn and they're like, you know, there's four of us, so we should probably name ourselves. And then the thing is like, huh, it's got to be something fantastic. And then Miles Teller goes, say that again. And he goes, fantastic. And he goes, I think we got a name. And then it 
does a slam it's so dunk. It's too, because like that floor. dude, you can just look at that dude, and I don't mean like the thing. I mean the person who plays, the, like the guy. Yeah, that guy's never said the word fantastic in his life. <laughs> There's no way. So they just pulled that out of his butt. I don't think so. It's so dumb. And, yeah, and also like the casting on this movie is it makes sense for the time, but it's like too on the nose. Like choosing Miles Teller as Mr. Fantastic, Kate Mara as um, uh, Sue Storm, Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm, and then Jamie Bell as the thing. It's just like, wait, it's too oh, obvious. Okay. okay. Are they, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that Miles, Miles Teller is a great actor because of Whiplash. Uh huh. So this movie is an example of very i think very poor casting and very poor directing because his acting is awful he's not even he's phoning bad. it in he's like trying to be a trying to act and it's truly truly awful but it's like i know he's not a bad actor yeah and then you can't convince me that michael b jordan's a teenager at this point in his career no because so no. this this director directed chronicle which i really like that movie uh-huh. with dane dehan michael b jordan and then that other guy i don't remember what his name is um who's also a really good actor really love that movie it's a great found footage movie yeah and it's like that movie's like 2009 yeah probably and it's like okay i can believe that michael b jordan was in high school at that time right this is like no he's way too like like filled out Uh as a man to convince me of that so there's that kate mara mara whatever mike and i were talking about it's like there was a time in her career where i was just like i loved her and everything i saw her in yeah but she is like such diminishing returns everything i'm like liking her less and less in everything that i see her in i know and i would like her sister too i would like i like both of them i know a lot but i feel like they're that maybe they're victims to like what they've been cast in. I guess I'm just kind of like the funny part about that is, is I've always thought that the reason I liked her is because she's so versatile. But if I think about it, she just says the same thing and every like she she does a lot of the same uh-huh. stuff. Yeah. So and she does the stupid thing in this movie. I hate this kind of crap where it's like Mr. Fantastic sits down next to her and he's trying to flirt with her because we all know Sue Storm and Reed Richards get married eventually. Yeah. But when they're doing it. He's like, oh, are you listening to music? And she's like, music is just um, beats that are formed together scientifically, and it emotes a response. So, yes, I guess I'm listening to music, but it's just to emote a response of relaxation. And you're like, shut up. Get out of here. You suck. Yeah, seriously. It was so dumb. And they only did that because later on it's like patterns. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, yeah. I don't, there was like, <laughs> that correlation made no sense, but that's why they did it, you know? It, it's kind of like... I mean, I really, we've discussed thoroughly how much we don't like Ant-Man, but it is, it is almost like they saw, I know Ant-Man came out the same year, so this is not what happened, but it's like they saw Ant-Man and they were like, what if we doubled down on all the science stuff and made it even twice as much than in Ant-Man where it's already too much? And then they made this yep, movie. So they went really hard on the science stuff, which just doesn't make sense to you because it's not possible. It's not real science. No. So. And it, it's not like. Um, and oh, you're going to tell me that. So Miles Teller's in high school doing his science project on um, teleportation. <laughs> so his teachers are like, that's not science. Don't you're you failed. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. no, that's not true because he pro- he de- demonstrated it to you and he got a response out of his experiment. So you would be impressed more yeah. than impressed. You'd be calling NASA. Yeah. And then, so they walk, they saunter off. And then this guy and this girl walk up, Kate Mara and her dad and, it's like, are do these people just go around to, to science fairs yeah, trying to find the kid who, that? like, how did, what, what's, what's the story on this one? Cause they just come up so nonchalantly. And what's funny is, you know, you think that like working on teleportation and, and they, you know, it's government stuff. So like uh-huh. they're, you'd think they'd be pretty covert and they're just out loud, full volume, just like you, you cracked teleportation. <laughs> and it's like, no one's saying that in a high school gym where there are a bunch of people walking yeah. around. No one's saying that. So that was really bad. And, yeah, and, then, and it's also, yeah, it's just like the, I, I, we don't, Jordan and I do not like sitting through a movie trying to figure out the logicness of things, the, the, the logic probability. I, that's not fun for me. When I sit down and see a superhero movie, I don't need realism, but there are certain things that like, like you sit there and you just can't reconcile. Like, why are there NASA people walking around a high school, like, science fair that's in a gymnasium 
You, you can't give me an answer to that because it doesn't make any sense. No. It's just like it doesn't follow basic laws of just human behavior. Yeah, well, it's that suspension of dis- disbelief. They just don't. It, it's not with that at all. Yeah, and they, and they do it, that it makes stupid... Me, it reminds me that I'm watching a movie. <laughs> yeah, and they do that dumb thing where they get drunk, and then they're like, we should go to this planet because we want to be the first people to teleport there. And you're just like... They're scientists. Why would they think this way? Well... The argument, not only are they drunk, they're all underage drinking. Yeah. And like kids. So like maybe you can do that. But first of all, one of, because now at this point we had Planet of the Apes, we might've even had a sequel at this point. Yeah. I think we, I think there were two by now. I don't remember the, how the animation, I mean, I'm sure the animation in the first one's like a little dated at this point. However, it's Andy Serkis. So like you want to watch really good motion capture, even though those movies are pretty boring, like motion capture is incredible yeah in planet of the apes when you still have a performance you you have a performance and so haven't seen all that being said the guy who plays dr doom is even in one of the planet of the ape movies uh Mm -hmm. they have a chimp in this movie that they teleport and at first of all first thing they haven't been working on this for very long or at least they have not indicated that they have and you can't just jump from like trying to get the thing to work period to transporting like a piece of paper to a chimp. You don't do that. Like <laughs> in t- I'm talking about movie wise, like in movie science things, it's always, you have to do a goat or a rat or you, even just like material. Like why not something that like isn't a basketball, living? like they, they didn't even show that. So it just jumped from them doing a chimp. And it's like, that's never a good idea because you're teleporting the next, the, the closest thing to a human. Yeah. So if you fail, in a way that reflects that humans have failed. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, like, uh, morale, not morality. Um, Oh, the mor- not morality. What's the word? Like, I had, I do not know. You know, when you're trying to have like a rapport with everyone and be like, Oh, we're a really good camaraderie com- camaraderie. Well, it's not just that. It's like, this is going to kill me, whatever. But you know, it's like, you're, you're like approving of this and you send this chimp and then it, ethics. Uh, no, it's not ethics. <sighs> Whatever. Anyway, doesn't make sense at all. Also, the chimp looks terrible, which we so know bad. that it could look better at this point yeah. in 2015. So that's terrible. And then not only that, so then the kids go. Yeah, they, so kids go, whatever, get their powers. Later on, way later on in well, the movie. And, and when we're there, they do the dumb, like, alien slash Prometheus, alien covenant and Prometheus That's thing. That's what I was about to say. Oh, you were? Go ahead, go oh, ahead. Oh, well, then. just, so, you know, the kids do it, the machine breaks, so then for the next year, they're trying to rebuild the machine, because they know it works, so they're uh. just trying to make it do, to make it work again. So then, you know, we're getting towards the end of the movie, finally they get it to work again, and instead of testing it to see if it works, they're going to send human beings. Yeah. Just... Right off the bat. Right off the bat. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, if they die, you can't feel bad for yourself. And it, w- it wouldn't be that bad if the movie didn't double down on the science. But they double down. Th- it's kind of like this movie is like Jurassic Fallen Kingdom plus um, plus uh, uh, Alien Covenant as far as issues where they just like they do things that logically – do not like humans would not make those sorts of decisions. Mm-hmm. So like if I watch a scary movie, you know, there's the whole thing where it's like, get out of there, get out of there. And you're like, man, this person lo- is so dumb. But I sit there and I go, I get it. I would probably freeze up if there was a killer with a chainsaw coming toward me. I understand that. Yeah. Like I can, I can see how a human would do that. But when you're in something, when you're in these worlds where they're just making these, they're making these decisions where it's like, you're a scientist. Mm-hmm. Like you, by your very nature, you explore all the options and make the best educated guess. And you're just doing these stupid things. Yeah. And and comic book wise, they're like, I, I think they're like on an astronaut science mission and they just get hit by like a geostorm, mm-hmm. like an Ad Astra, where mm-hmm. you're like, oh, they're just victim of circumstance. This, they like, they do all the issues. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember after this movie came out, I thought to myself, I had this hot take where I was like, the Fantastic Four just don't belong in the modern age. Like, they're, they're like a 60s, 70s comic book, but they're not, they don't belong in the modern age. And I was like, I'm glad that this is probably the end of them for a while because it just doesn't work. And then I thought about it more, and I heard other people say that, like, The Incredibles are basically the good fa- Fantastic mm-hmm. Four movies. And I go, they're right. So you can do it. Yeah, that's possible. And... I think the reason this doesn't work is not because they're outdated. It's because they don't understand who the Fantastic Four are at all. Mm-hmm. 
because I've been reading some of their comic books and they're really good. Mm-hmm. Like, and they were, they're like 10 year old comic books. So they still came out in this century yeah. and they're like, they still have issues like, like tension in their marriage yeah. and like well, tension that's what you're describing the is team. The, the watch this movie. You're like, what is this movie about? Yeah. And they, and I think we, we talked about this as we were watching it. Like to them, the movie is about their origin and it's like, that's never, if you watch the origin stories of all the other movies, they're not about the origin. Like that's just the story. That, that's, that's the not premise. The, that's not that's the, the theme. setting. Yeah. So the, the real story should be about pride or about like a relationship or yeah. anything like that's So they just totally didn't understand. Like, do you have to make the movie about something? Mm-hmm. Cause I, I didn't relate to anyone and because they didn't make anyone relatable. Also Kate Mara wears a wig the whole movie and it looks awful yeah (laughs) it looks awful yeah it's it's also like i guess they're they're doubling down on an origin story that's not very interesting yeah so if you think about like um a lot of the origin movies in to compare like the cinematic universe you know you have iron man basis backbone of the entire series good origin you have captain america great origin you, you have there's a couple that we don't like as much but um even like captain marvel like there's something interesting to explore in her origin like you're saying well but, even but this even one Ant is man like, ant-man's a terror like it's such a boring movie to me but it's about like him you know wanting to be better than himself because he is a criminal yeah and he no longer wants to be a criminal and uh-huh. then you know he wants to be a good role model for his daughter yeah like that's what the movie is about right and it's just like yeah, the movie's not even good, and I know what the movie's about. <laughs> yeah. and so that, like, that's not the issues I had with that movie. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. This is like this movie is like basic problem with this movie is that. Yeah, it's it's just horrible. It's scary. And it's it, spooky. It is spooky, and and it it, all, it also reeks of just there. There's a lot of examples of of this, but it but it reeks of kind of the Suicide Squad thing where you go. They're just expecting me to like this stuff, but they didn't earn it ever no. in this movie. No. Like they're 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 just like I said before, they're like dunking this whole movie and you're like, no one's on the court. Like you never <laughs> earned it. Like it's not that interesting and you lowered the hoop. So it's I'm not impressed. Yep. It's it's just it's so dumb. Um and the animation, I mean the the CGI in this movie is really bad very bad and then you look at um avengers and ant-man that came out this year if you compare and contrast it is drastic yeah how much better those movies look yeah and i think going back to because i'm comparing a bad movie with a bad movie Uh and this is my opinion but like with ant-man they movies boring too scientific all this stuff but like visually it was stimulating mm-hmm. like the as to a that degree. dumb aspect no, no no but like the when he's an ant man yeah and he's like those it, those scenes when he's like the super hyper focus super hyper stuff. focused cool. stuff it's awesome yeah was it worth it no but <laughs> it was super cool and like this movie they didn't do anything interesting with their you know in that way like with their powers mm-hmm. i actually thought that the thing looked good Ugh. you didn't think so no i thought he looked good oh okay I, I'm curious how he's gonna look when uh, Disney gets a hold of him. Yeah, um, if they'll just go completely different, like if if there's a way to go completely yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'll do CG. Yeah, but it'll probably look better. Um, do we do we have more on the movie? We just like slammed it pretty hard. No, but I was thinking that we could, for a brief moment, talk about our because it's Halloween. Uh huh. Our favorite scary movies. Oh. Okay, let me finish up on Fantastic Four. Okay, and then let's do, let's close with that. Um, I just want to say that the at Comic Con, Kevin Feige said I don't have time to talk about the Fantastic Four, and um, having Disney Marvel uh, take over them and use them it in their series. Not Sony. What were they a part of? They were Fox, so oh, they've acquired Fox. Yeah, right. So now they have X Men yeah. and Fantastic Four. Is so exciting to me. Because classically, the cinematic universe like knows how to have fun, and I think the key that they need with with um, Fantastic Four is, of course, they they need tension in their relationships and whatnot. But I want to watch a movie where I walk out of Fantastic Four and I'm like, that was fun. I want to feel 
the way not to the this degree because there's no way but like the way you feel when you watch guardians you're like a lot of depth but that was a fun movie Mm -hmm. and and having them in it i know that they're gonna cast the perfect people Mm -hmm. and i know that they 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 actually understand who these characters are and i cannot wait to see how they implement them and my hope just i'm throwing this out there as a hope then we can talk scary movies my hope is that in Doctor Strange 2, when they open up the multiverse, there's a multiverse where the Fantastic Four are already like the height of the Avengers. Are they di- being in that movie? Are they in that movie? No, we don't know oh, anything. Okay. This is all conjecture. Okay. So since there's a Doctor Strange movie called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, I hope that he opens up the multiverse and that on a different Earth, in a different timeline, the Fantastic Four are the equivalent of Iron Man and like the Avengers. And so we don't need any origin story, but then they have to come to our earth to help us or something like that. And then like bridge the gap. Cause that would be so cool if they were just already established heroes, no origin. That's it. <sighs> but scene. in scene, but okay. Spooky movies. You hit it, baby. Well, what's your scary, favorite scary movie that you would recommend? My favorite scary movie is, um, would it be the shining? I thought it was psycho. Psycho, yes, yes. I I knew there was another one. Psycho is my favorite thriller, my favorite scary movie. And I I watched it recently, and anyone who tells you that that movie is not scary doesn't understand, because it's so scary. It is scary. I also still find Jaws extremely scary every time I watch it. When people are like, no, it's just cheesy, I think they confuse it with the sequels, because Jaws is a terrifying movie. Mm Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't need a movie to like make me. I, I prefer it to get stuck in my head. And mm-hmm. both of those movies, you watch them and they stick with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, if a movie can scare people away from beaches for an entire summer, that's a pretty scary movie. Mm-hmm. But Psycho is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. What about yours? Probably The Shining. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. Um, Talk about getting stuck in your head. That's yeah. weird. One of the best haunted house stories ever. And oh yeah, the the reason being because uh, it's not really about the place; it's about the people. Mm, yeah. Uh, well, and and like Fantastic Four didn't do the uh, all of these movies that we mentioned are about more than just the story. They have themes and issues. So, like in Shining, it's about alcoholism, mm-hmm. and that's part of why it's so good. Mm-hmm. Great movie, great book. They don't agree with each other. If you had to choose, which one would you choose? You have oh, to choose. Oh, the book probably. Like yeah. if I liked more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably the book. But it's because the the book gets way way deep into Jack's past. Yeah. So I, I think it makes him um, just more relatable. Mm-hmm. And then in The Shining, it's like you you understand early on like the issues that they're that they've gone through and stuff. And like, he really needs a win, you know, like I, you understand that, but this is just on a deeper level because it's a book and there's more time. There's more pages to do it, but the shining is great because it, it's slow. It gets under your skin Mm -hmm. and it just makes you feel kind of gross. And it's just a great child actor, you know? So it's like, that doesn't happen often with scary movies, you know? I mean, I think we're in a, like a, kind of a, re- a renaissance, renaissance age of, of child actors and horror stuff yeah thank goodness but yeah so that's one of the, that's like my favorite one but yeah. um the recent scary movies I've, i was thinking of like well not recent but because i don't know what the last scary movie i saw was recently it like in theaters yeah um yeah i don't know but, but I, I think i think definitely um I mean, Get Out's like a modern classic already, I think. Yeah. I think that'll pretty much stand the... I, I'd put that kind of in the in the psycho category where it's like, it's not it's not like classically scary. It's, it's more psychological psychologically thriller. scary. Um, but Mike and I have Get been Out rules. watching Scream, the Scream franchise. Yeah. And I think a lot of people think they're for laughs now, which I... Well, sure, Because yeah. they are kind of like they're satirical cheesy, they're of campy, horror. They're campy, yeah. che- cheesy, but suggestion, watch Scream 1. And then watch Scream 2. I mean, I guess this comes out on Halloween, but yeah. keep the Halloween spirit going because it, yeah, it's, it is it's good. one of the smartest, one of the smartest movies in that time, in oh, that yeah. decade, because it, it's a commentary on scary movies. Yeah. And it's like any horror fan would love it because of the commentary. 
And it's thrilling, too. This is my first time watching the series, and I really like it. Yeah. Each one I like less than the previous one, but there's still, like... Like, Scream 1 is close. It's not quite an 8 to me out of 10, but it's close. Scream 2 is, like, a solid 7, and then Scream 3 is a solid 6. Yeah. Um, and then we haven't watched 4 yet. But I should have written down, like, categories of horror movies to suggest. Yeah. Well, uh, there's another Halloween just around the corner in 365 days. That's true. And also, watch Nightmare Before Christmas, because you can watch it from now until Christmas. So, I mean, you can watch whatever you want, but peak time. To watch it well thank you for listening happy halloween happy halloween um if you want to get the episodes early sign up at patreon patreon.com slash micah mccaw and you can get uh, episodes on monday this one's still just coming out on halloween normal for everybody so um but uh yeah support us that way if you'd like to and let us know what your favorite scary movies are i, I love talking yeah, put, scary movies put it in the comment thread um I think we'll probably try and cover Scream maybe next time around this season. Um, sure. But maybe not. Maybe if... There are a few horror, horror franchises. There, Period. Few horror franchises. Slash. Few horror franchises that I'm willing to cover. Yes. Because <laughs> some of them are either too long or just so bad that I just don't want to put myself through it. Well, and some of them, like, like, you might go, oh, it'd be fun if you covered Halloween. But Halloween has like 14 movies, and I think... But a lot of them are reboots. Yeah, and I think at a certain point w- that we wouldn't have anything to say about them. Yeah. Um, if we were just covering like Halloween and then the new Halloween, we'd have a lot to say. Yeah. But um, yeah, some of them we won't. I think we'll probably do The Conjuring at some point, because that's yeah. kind of interesting. We will not be doing Saw at any point in time. No, no, I will. Ne- I don't want to so watch So if anyone's holding movies. their breath for that, yeah. we're not doing it. And probably not the Nightmare movies. No. Definitely not uh, Friday the 13th. There's just too many of a lot of these series. Yeah, unless um, some people can plead cases for these besides Saw. That's yeah. a firm no. But on any of the other, like if that's your favorite horror movie franchise or anything, let us yeah. know why and maybe convince us otherwise. And you might be thinking, but you did, you're doing Marvel, but there's there's plenty to say. And, yeah. and there's series within the series. But with a lot of those, it's just like, oh, it's another and slasher. And a lot of horror movies are like, that's... Um, that's John Carpenter's Halloween. Yeah. That's his thing. Yeah, yeah. And then like uh, Wes Craven, his he's Scream. Yeah. And then and Nightmare. And Nightmare. And then, but for Marvel, it's like pretty much only Kevin Feige. You know, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, like, yeah. you know, James Gunn's Guardian of the Galaxy. Um, yeah. So even like John the aesthetic Favreau, changes. But and that's that, yeah. that's about it. So that's why there's more to say. Mm-hmm. But I think Conjuring, there should be plenty, I would imagine. Be fun, because then we get to cover, cover James Wan that way, because I'm not doing Saw. Yeah, yes. But he's, in the, he's touched that series. Well, we'll cover him at some point, too, because he's Aquaman, remember? Oh, that's true. Yeah. But he's he's an interesting director. Which I feel like whenever we do an Aquaman episode, it might clock in at our longest episode, because <laughs> there is a lot to say about that, okay. both good and really bad. Um Thanks for listening, though. Tomorrow, you can listen to Spider-Man Homecoming. And if you're a Patreon, you've probably already listened to it four days ago, five days ago. Trick or treat.